I'm Susan, and thanks for tuning in to Decorating Magic. Today, I'm going to use silver leaf to transform something ordinary into something spectacular. It's a little tricky though, but I'm going to show you how to do it like a pro. It's a centuries old technique used by skilled artisans using real gold and silver. Today though, they have kits that make it much more affordable and simpler. Precious metals are still available if you can afford it, but I have a feeling if you could afford it, you wouldn't be doing this yourself. As you can see, I have a pair of lamps here. This one I've already covered with silver leaf. It's not finished, it's got a couple more steps, and this one is ready to go. I did want to tell you though, when you start your project, pick a room that has very little air current because the merest breeze will send this silver leaf flying everywhere. It's very, very delicate. Um, I've also, I've put down waxed paper to protect my surface and to catch any leftovers. Before we get started, let me show you what we're going to use. The silver leaf cut comes in a little pack like this, and inside you'll find a little book of silver leaf that is stuck to this orange waxy paper. I think there were 18 sheets that came in my kit, and this lamp took about 20 sheets to complete. But what you do is you apply glue to your lamp and let it get tacky. It takes about 20 minutes. And then you kind of pull back the paper and attach it to where the tacky area is. And then the idea is to then pull the orange sheet away. Uh, the kit shows the pieces coming off in one nice big solid piece, but let me just tell you that is not going to happen. What happens is that tears and you left with big gaps uh, that you're going to have to come back in and fill in. All right, now that leads me to the glue. They sell the glue separately and they sell two kinds. They have spray glue and they have this little bottle of liquid glue that you just use an artist brush and brush it on. I like this glue better for a couple of reasons. Number one, the spray glue is expensive. It's like $12 a can. Um, also, you can't really do that inside. I mean, you know, it's going to get every, everywhere. But also, um, it's difficult to get this silver leaf on, on in big areas without leaving big areas that you've missed. And the glue dries so quickly that you're going to have to come back, reapply the glue in the areas where you've missed. And that would just be impossible with the spray glue, I would think. Here's a couple of other things we're going to be using. I've just got some little silver craft paint that I might use on the base to the harps just because it would be easier than trying to do the silver leaf. I may use the silver leafing pen because that's actually pretty quick and easy. And believe me, I silver leafed the other lamp, the harp. Oh, it took forever. So that's real quick and simple. And we've just got an artist brush to apply the glue. I'm going to go ahead and glue uh, apply some of the glue to my base lamp here. The package says to let it that it takes about 40 minutes to get tacky. I found that it really only took about 20 minutes. And I am going to apply just to a small area because this silver lacing process takes a lot longer than you think it's gonna. This lamp took me over four hours. So I'm just going to do small areas so you can see how I'm doing it. And then we'll go on to the other steps for the other lamp. Okay, the glue is tacky and we're going to go ahead and start. Now I've taken my little piece of silver leaf paper and rolled it back a little bit and I'm going to aim it as far in as I can and then pull this paper off. You see what I mean about it breaking. Okay, let me try it again. Sometimes I use a little chopstick to help me guide it. But it will stick immediately to the glue. Like I said, this glue dries pretty quickly. And this whole process takes a lot longer than you think. It's almost like you're putting a puzzle together or making a mosaic. And that's again why I like the brush on glue better because you know you're going to have to go back and reapply it. Try not to overlap it though because it will not stick to itself just to the areas you've glued. Now I would imagine that this is probably a little easier 
if you're doing something flat, but um, I can't imagine doing this to like a ceiling or a wall. And just take your time. It's kind of fun. You can see how it flies around the room. All right, I think you get the idea of what we're doing. So I'm going to put this lamp to the side and then we're going to work on the other one. I'm going to finish it up. Okay, now we're back to this lamp and we're going to go ahead and finish it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a soft brush and we're going to go around and get all the little pieces that aren't stuck on. We're going to get that all off. Then I might patch up some of these little holes using my little silver leafing pen. Um, and then I'm going to put an antique glaze over it. Just It's a little bit too shiny bright for me. And um, I'm going to use a, an antique glaze that I've made. Um, I'm going to have the complete instructions in the written portion of the video description to show you how to do that. Or you can see how I mix it on another tape I've made called How to Paint, like, how to paint Furniture Like a Pro. All right. And then after, we're, after the glaze dries, I'm going to seal it with polyurethane. And then we'll talk about lampshades. You can see all that stuff just flying everywhere. And one reason I put two coats of polyurethane on is so that this doesn't continue to come off. And this brush I'm using is actually just a makeup brush that I don't know I ever really use. But you see, quite a bit comes off. Okay, I think you kind of get the idea there. Let me use my silver leafing pen to sort of fill in these larger gaps, although I don't mind them. You know, some of the larger ones I'll fill in, but the little ones are fine, I think. That's just a matter of personal preference, though. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply my antique glaze now. Uh, you don't have to. If you like it this way, go ahead and put your two coats of polyurethane on now. Save yourself a step. Um, I'm just going to put my own little glaze on it to knock it down a little bit. And like I said, um, I will have the written instructions in the video description on how to make your own glaze. But you can buy ready-made glaze. Um, and all it is, is I just use some acrylic craft paint. I get like a grayish brown. I can mix it with a small amount of um, glazing medium. You can buy this like this in a little container from the craft store or they sell it at the home improvement store in quarts or gallons. And basically the ratio is oh like one part color to three parts glaze. And actually um, All's glaze is is untinted paint. So by putting in a little bit of the brownish gray paint and adding glaze, you're making it transparent. The more glaze you use, the more transparent it is. And basically all it really is is faux dirt. So the aim is to brush it on and then wipe it off with a wet I mean with a dry paper towel. This step goes pretty quickly. And, you know, it'll just tone it down a little bit. Some of that paint will get stuck in the little nooks and crannies. And then this dries fairly quickly. Might be best to wait overnight but it should certainly be dry in a couple hours. All right, let me show you how you wipe it off. 
I just use a paper towel. You can use a cotton rag. And you kind of just wipe it and dab it and just to kind of get it to where you like it. A little bit, maybe not so much. If you mess up uh, and you don't like it at all, you can take a wet paper towel and just remove all of it. And start over or leave it plain, however you want to do it. But the point is, is to take most of it off, let it get into the little nooks and crannies, and then where you do see it, make sure it doesn't look like something you've applied with a brush and taken off with a paper towel to sort of pat it. This particular paper towel has a little pattern to it, so um, I kind of have to double pat. Most people wear gloves, but I just can't seem to do that. But it does wash off with soap and water, so it's not really a big deal. All right, I'm just going to continue doing that all the way down. I'll show you another area. It might be easier to see on this big flat area. And it's really on these kind of flat areas where it's harder to make it not look so contrived. You kind of have to pat it in. You might need several paper towels. All right, well, just get it to where you like it, as little or as much as you like. But it's, it's knocked the shine down a little bit, but it's still very silvery. I let the glaze dry a couple of hours, and then I went ahead and put the first coat of polyurethane on. Uh, and I'm just about to put on the second coat. Um, as you can see, there's none of that loose flaking anymore. Everything's all nice and sealed in. Uh, and the reason I put two coats on is because, well, just for extra protection, but also because I can never tell where I've missed with polyurethane because it's kind of hard to tell where you've been. So I'm just going to go give it a quick coat all the way around. And this dries pretty quickly. A couple, really probably 20-30 minutes. Um, and then all you have to do really is uh, wait till it's all the way dry. Let it cure for a day or two before you really use it. And then you'd be done. But I did want to talk about lampshades. I've got a couple different styles here, and I want to, I'm want to see which one I like the best. Keep the coats thin so it's not all gloppy. And I use uh, water-based polyurethane just because it's a lot easier on the cleanup, and it doesn't smell as bad. And I usually use, I usually use matte uh, for most of my painted projects. But in this particular case, I want it to be shiny, so I'm going to use uh, gloss or semi-gloss. I actually am using semi-gloss because that's just what I happen to have. And if this isn't shiny enough for me when I'm finished, I may take it outside and um, use some spray polyurethane, some high-gloss spray. I don't really recommend that for really sealing a project. But, for instance, if I'm decided I don't really like the, um, the sheen on this, if I want more sheen, I'll go outside and spray it, and I may do that because this is looking a little dull to me. I want to show you a couple possibilities with lampshades. Now, this is the lampshade that came with the lamp. It's a traditional bell-shaped um, lampshade. And, first of all, the color is all wrong. It needs to be white. Black would look pretty if you could find a nice silver one, gray. Uh, but other than that, it looks a little low to me. If you could bring it up a little bit like that, that would look better in my opinion. And a way to do that would be simply to get a larger harp. These harps allow you to use different size lampshades uh, without having to buy a new shade. I'm going to try this round one. This is a nice contemporary 
drum shade and I think I'm gonna like this one the best I like the white it looks nice and clean and I like the fact that it sort of juxtaposes the you know contemporary and traditional look together and it gives it just a nice kind of fresh feel I like that one a lot but I also bought these fun rectangular ones like this but they have a different system it's a spider system so I can't use my harp so I need to take that off real quick these just come off very quickly and we'll see how this one does I do like that it's kind of cute but I think it's just a hair too low I think it would look better if it were just up a little bit like that I think I'm gonna keep the round drum shade I think I like that one the best that's about it our project is done I hope you've enjoyed it and think of me next time you need some decorating magic <music>